This video will give you an overview but good understanding in the interaction between the superstructures, the foundations, and the soil. This concept will be divided into 10, for easy explanation and understanding. Number 1. Understanding the basics of superstructures, foundations, and the soil. In civil engineering and construction, the superstructure is any component constructed above the ground level, while the substructure is any component built below the ground level. Where does the ground level start? Floors are provided to divide a building into different levels. Like the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor, and so on. This helps to create more accommodation, one above the other, within a certain limited space. Any floor below the ground floor is known as underground floor. The first floor is usually above the ground floor. The ground floor is the zero floor level. The second floor is above the first floor. We say ground floor, not soil floor. Because ground is the solid part of the earth, where construction and other activities can take place. Looking at the superstructure from the ground, below the foundation, the level where the foundation closes, and the superstructure begins, is known as the plinth level. Plinth is the beam near the foundation. Building or structural foundation is all the constructed systems, connected together, anchored, or tied to the superstructure to help hold firm the superstructure to the ground for stability. These foundation connections can take different forms. The constructed connections, known as the foundation, will support the superstructure and transmits its loads, weights, directly to the Mother Earth, which is the ground below it. The soil ground will support the foundation. And the foundation will support the superstructure. The superstructure can be buildings, bridges, dams, roads, skyscrapers, stadiums, and so on. The interaction between a building's superstructure, foundation, and the soil starts with understanding each component's role. As already stated, the superstructure refers to the above-ground part of the building. The foundation is the below-ground part that transfers the building's load to the soil. And the soil provides support and stability. The foundation is part of the substructure, below the ground. To buttress the aforementioned statement, below the ground, is the soil. The soil is the part of the earth, below the ground. The soil is simply minerals, organic matter, living organisms, gas and water, which are divided into three size classes. Clay, silt, and sand. The percentages of particles in these size classes is called soil texture. The mineralogy of soils is diverse. Number 2. Superstructure and Load Transmission The superstructure which includes the floors, the columns, the beams, slabs, the walls, and the roof, generates various loads, known as dead loads, or permanent loads, or static loads. Also, live loads or imposed loads or temporary loads, or dynamic loads, can be moved around, in or out of the building, without causing any effect on the integrity of the superstructure. Examples of imposed loads, or live loads, are, occupants and furniture. Both the dead loads, and the imposed loads, need to be safely transmitted to the foundation. Number 3. Types of Foundation in Construction and in civil engineering. There are only two types of foundation. These are shallow foundations and deep foundations. Examples of shallow foundations are isolated footings, also known as pad or spread footings. Other examples are mat foundations, raft foundations, strip foundations, strap foundations, combined footing foundations, and so on. Examples of deep foundations are pile foundations, pier foundations, deep raft, drilled shafts, caisson foundation and cofferdam. These different types of foundations are used based on soil conditions, load requirements, and building design. Number 4. Load Distribution in Foundations The foundation's primary role is to distribute the building loads to the soil. Shallow foundations spread the load across a wider area, while deep foundations transfer loads to deeper, more stable soil layers or rock. Number 5. Soil Bearing Capacity Soil bearing capacity is the ability of the soil, the ground, to support the loads applied by the foundation. Remember that the foundation bears the entire weight of the superstructure. 
and the soil or ground beneath it, bears the weight of the foundation. Engineers must assess soil properties to ensure it can safely support the building or other forms of superstructures. Factors like soil type, moisture content, and density affect bearing capacity. Number 6. Foundation-Soil Interaction The interaction between foundation and the soil involves stress distribution and settlement. Foundations should be designed to minimize differential settlement, that is, uneven sinking, which can cause structural damage. Number 7. Mitigating Soil Issues Soil issues like liquefaction, soil expansion, or poor compaction can affect foundation performance. Techniques such as soil compaction, soil stabilization, and the use of geotextiles can improve soil properties. Number 8. Foundation Design Considerations Designing a foundation involves considering load types, soil properties, environmental conditions, and building codes. Engineers use calculations and simulations to ensure stability and safety, even before the foundation of the structure starts. Number 9. Construction and Monitoring During construction, foundations must be built according to design specifications. Continuous monitoring is essential to ensure proper load transfer and to detect any signs of settlement or movement as the structural loads on the foundation from the superstructure increases. Number 10. Long-Term Performance The long-term performance of a building relies on maintaining the integrity of the foundation and soil interaction. Regular inspections and maintenance can prevent and address issues like settlement or structural damage. In summary, the interactions between the superstructures, the foundations and the soil is critical in ensuring the stability and safety of buildings. The superstructure generates loads that need to be transmitted to the ground safely. This is achieved through the foundation. The foundation's primary role is to distribute these loads, that is, live loads and dead loads to the soil, which supports the entire structure. Soil bearing capacity, which depends on factors, like soil type, moisture content, and density. These factors are crucial in determining how well the soil can support the foundation. Engineers must assess these soil properties to design for the appropriate foundations that will prevent differential settlement, which is an issue where parts of the structure settle unequally, causing structural damage. To enhance soil stability, techniques like compaction, stabilization, and using geotextiles are employed. The foundation design must consider load types, soil properties, environmental conditions, and adhere to the building codes of that region or country. During construction, precise adherence to design specifications and continuous monitoring ensure proper load transfer and helps to detect any signs of movement or settlement. Please, add in the comment section more information about the interactions between the superstructures, the foundations, and the soil. If this basic information was helpful, do subscribe to the Kelvin Academy YouTube channel for more. I will see you in the next video.